happy holidays, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the time with your family and all the hockey that's taking place. Well, last night there was an embarrassment. Team Canada, although it was the embarrassment on the ice, not off the ice for a change, they didn't have a great game. Goaltender for Czechia played great. Canada, not so much. We're going to go through and look at some of these clips of things that goalies did well and some maybe some mistakes that they screwed up on that we want to learn from. And this is what an NHL goalie coach would do when they're looking at these type of clips. Now going forward through the tournament, I'm going to try to capture some of this stuff depending on my schedule with all the goalie clinics and private lessons I'm doing. So I hope to get several of these out during the tournament and hopefully watching some of the top kids in Canada and the world play can really help your game if you're not already one of those top kids. All right, let's look at Canada's first goal. Game started off promising. We thought we had this game in the bag. Point shot comes in, aerial tip down through the goalie. First blush, you look at it, you know what? I don't think that goalie's got a, a chance on that. That's a great goal. However, as a legendary Mitch Korn said a million times, nothing through you, nothing underneath you. You're gonna see on these subsequent replays here, that he's up high, looking over, around screens. He's got good puck tracking. Now here, for some unknown reason, he decides to elevate his stick off the ice and not protect flat on the ice. Puck gets tipped down through the goalie into the back of the net. These guys practice this skill forever. This is not a lucky tip. It's a purposeful tip. And as you'll be able to see here from the back view, uh, he did get down into his deep stance just as the puck arrived but he didn't get the stick on the ice and it bit him up right through the five hole with no five hole coverage there. All right, this Czechia goal, even strength goal, back door. Again, another one of these goals where you look at it and you go, geez, this goalie had no chance. They left Goudreau out, hung out to dry. However, you can't get puck locked. Poor angle guy's not likely going to be bringing it at the net. He's not the dangerous guy. It's the guy in front of the net. Goudreau is very puck locked on this guy in front or over in the corner. Doesn't see the guy in front. Easy tap and goal. So when this guy's setting up here, we already have to know there's a guy open and attacking center lane drive to the backside. You have to know the guy's there. Goudreau's completely unaware and becomes a spectator. Didn't even move over on it. He's looking around the correct side of the screen, but puck locked, not aware of the off puck threat. All right, Czechia's goal here, even strength goal, shot from the point. And I think this is tantamount to all the other plays that we've been seeing from Goudreau in this game. He's not really tracking the puck well today. He just seemed to be in that situation where pucks were eating him alive. So, we watch the replay again. Puck's going to go back to the point, come in through traffic, and he didn't battle to look around the screen on the correct side. Clean draw win. He looks to the middle of the ice. Puck goes through traffic to the short side from a left-handed point guy. You should probably be looking around the screen on the same side as the stick side as the shooter. And generally speaking, you want to look around the short side. He was also deep in the blue paint. We didn't give himself a chance to get lucky on a puck if you don't see it cleanly. Now in this third goal, even strength goal, we call this the short side American League side goal because if you get scored on here, they send you back to the American League. Now Goudreau gets a great challenge on this. The Royal Road, or the line up the middle of the ice, is very well protected by his team. Off puck threats, you have to trust your team. Now, he did grab some great depth, which is showing he's dedicating himself to the shooter. However, he lines up on the shooter's left leg, not the stick puck. And, you know, for a lefty shot, to give him the, the short side is a minor league goal that's going to send you back to the minor leagues. You'll see it here in slow motion. He shoots from just about dot depth, a little inside of the dot, and Goody doesn't have a good angle. Now Canada gets back into this game with their second goal, even strength, shot from the wing, and there's a lot of stuff going on in this replay that you're going to have to watch to catch why it went in. 
first things first, we know this guy's a shooter. This Bedard kid loves a glove sight high. So the book on him is always going to be glove sight high. You know, obviously he can change from that, but his tendency is he loves the glove sight high. The teachable moment here is you need to know your opposition, where their tendencies are. So neutral zone turnover, check you caught in a bad situation. Bedard's a shooter, loves to shoot. Goalie doesn't have his feet set, and here's the problem. Defenseman puts the stick in the way, and if you don't get a stick deflected and stick and stick out of play, it's going to mess up the goalie. The goalie can't read the stick-puck relationship anymore. Puck flutters, and the goalie's at the mercy of the play. Not his fault, but I would like to see his feet set and recognize that's where he's likely going, top shelf. Here's a greasy, stoppable goal. And this was one of these ones that was on its way to getting Goudreau to the bench. Pretty simple situation. Puck dump in the corner. Pass through the goalie's limits. Goudreau tries to get a stick on it, but is very soft on it. And basically slightly redirected the puck. Guy gets an empty net tap in or whacks out of the air. But this is something that's easily preventable. He should also be taking quick looks to the slot, which he's not doing. So A, he had no idea the guy was there, and B, he didn't cut the pass anyways. He tried to get a stick on it, and you'll see from these alternate angles, what looked like a pretty goal where he had no chance, he did have a chance. So watch here. Puck to the middle, through the blue crease. He gets a stick on it, but look at his stick position. Heel on the ice. Doesn't get a solid contact on the puck. Back of the net. Once it gets out in front, you've got no chance. All right, Checky has got the fifth goal here. This is the one that sent Goudreau to the bench. Very, very weak goal, and this is something you can't let in, and likely, in my opinion, why you won't see Goudreau the rest of the tournament if the other kid plays even decently. Again, one of these games... Goudreau's still a young kid, still got lots of learning to do, and doing my scouting duties, I've noticed from talking to people around Sarnia that there's some question marks about work ethic and practice, and that's normal. I think for sometimes when kids get drafted, he's drafted third round to San Jose, and I think the work ethic isn't quite there yet, but he will get there because he's a talented kid. So on this rush, poor angle shot with a guy in the middle, which Goudreau knew about, but now he's trying to play the guy in the middle and not trusting the D to tie that guy up. And when you cheat and let one through your armpit, that's going to get you on the bench. For me, the biggest thing about this game was when the score was 0-0 and Canada was up 1-0. All the Michigan and all the scoop shots started. And the goalie for Checky was actually great. He was getting his head on these things up in the corner of the net. But here's the takeaway from this. At all levels... You do not need to motivate other people by doing TikTok stuff. And I don't want to sound like John Tortorella and the fun police and I'm screaming at clouds. But guess what? This isn't an exhibition game. This isn't game number 70 of you playing in the OHL or the WHL. In a tight tournament game, Stanley Cup playoff game, you don't do stuff like this because it has the potential to show up your teammates. And like in baseball, you don't over-celebrate a home run or there will be a price to pay later. This is the way hockey works. This is the unwritten rules of the sport. You don't do this in a tight game. Fifteen years ago, I first approached Paul Maurice after writing an article about this. What do you do when you lose your stick? There seems to be this massive panic that used to take place and when goalies used to need their stick to make stick saves, skate saves, etc. We would have the defenseman hand off our stick but here you see Czechia just relax, goalie doesn't have his stick, play proper defensive zone, chip the puck out of the zone, we can worry about getting the goalie stick later, it's not a panic. So do not take your defenseman's stick, they need it to get the puck out of the zone. <laughs>